What is a little fella? Well, this is a little fella. This is also a little fella. This... Well, no, you aren't. Get out of here. But sadly, in the wild, some little fellas evolve, while others don't get the luxury. Although, are they truly little fellas if they evolve? Well, it doesn't matter, because we're about to witness an uprising of the little fellas. Some of these little fellas are my favorite designs in all of Pokemon. So simple, so elegant and majestic. So giving them evolutions is always a treat. And hey, if you like my stuff, don't forget to chuck me a sub and like and comment. Provide me with all the good stuff for creating these little fella evolutions. All right, let's begin with one of my most favorite of the little fellas, Sableye. I love this creepy little lad. Sableye is full on goblin core and its mega just goes even better. For its evolution, I wanted to keep that sort of cryptid ghost nature and make it even freakier by making it long. There was this oldish movie called The Descent. I had to watch it with some old friends and I gotta tell you, I wasn't a fan. I hate horror movies. I don't do well with horror, so you can imagine watching it wasn't pleasurable for me. But the creatures in it are some kind of cave-dwelling, almost humanoid lads, inspired the design for this being this almost skeletal-looking Sableye. Much longer and lankier, this new form called Chris Cleave would be all about them sparklies, even using a special mix that they create with soil to embed larger crystals onto them in conjunction with the natural crystals forming on its body. This is a weird connection, but I imagine Chris Cleave moves like Chien Pao. There's like funny little noodle bounds it does. Coloring for Chris Cleave wasn't anything too wild. I wanted to keep it the same energy as Sableye, but as I always say, I love the rendering of the crystals and it ended up coming out so, so nice. While I was almost pondering changing its typing to Rock Ghost, I thought that this new evolution, it's kind of even more deserving of the dark type than Sableye anyway. Chris Cleave, the Gatherer Pokemon, a darkened ghost type, evolves from Sableye after using any evolution stone on it while holding a King's Rock. Chris Cleave lived deep within the mountains where they greedily hoard any gems and minerals possible. They secrete a sticky fluid from their pores that they combine with mud to hold anything that they don't want to devour immediately. It protects their hoard so aggressively that people who go down to hunt Chris Cleave are never seen again. Some tales say that the people that disappear become cursed and slowly transform into greedy Sableye trapped beneath the mountain forever. Chris Cleave has the abilities to pickpocket and stall. Alright, let's get on to our next little fella. No, oh, should I say fellas? It's Phalanx. I love Phalanx so much, it's a shame I never got the shiny hunt for it. I still remember thinking it was just a centipede from their leaf sprites of it. And to my pleasure finding out it was just a group of silly little Kirby lads. Just absolutely delightful. There's so many different ways you could go with an evolution of Phalanx. And I decided to go towards something a bit weird and different. In making Phalanx a sort of amalgamation in this form. And becoming a massive siege engine. One of those towers they would push up to castle walls for everyone to run onto. I got inspiration from Capone Beige from One Piece for this, especially in his full fortress form. This giant towering phalanx evo would have some secret weapons, although you'd see free phalanx there, there'd also be a normal sized phalanx in the hollow parts, as well as having phalanx shaped cannons within each of the arm panels there. It's truly a towering fortress of phalanx. I wanted in the evo, no matter what I did, to have a flowing cape. Especially making it tattered, as I wanted them to feel very cool and heroic and spartan. Even if it does look a bit goofy and awkward looking. I love the idea of Siegen smashing down its entire body like a hammer on the enemy once it gets close enough. Siegen, the siege Pokemon, a fighting type, evolves from Phalanx after using no retreat and defeating 30 foes. After evolving, Siegen becomes a combination of multiple phalanx, living together with smaller phalanx, who help with smaller tasks that Siegen find difficult. The two panels on each side of Siegen contain powerful weapons formed from previous phalanx armor. These weapons work like cannons when long-range attacks are needed. 
Seijin isn't afraid of close combat, however, and can throw their powerful weight around effortlessly. Sometimes Phalanx will leave Seijin and become a leader of their own Phalanx chain. Seijin have the abilities Battle Armor and Defiant. Let's do one of the most certified little fellas around. See, they even have their license. Pyukumuku is a joyous Pokemon, whether in animation or just absolutely yeeting this thing back in the ocean for fun. Hey, they love being thrown at max speeds, I'm sure. I really didn't know where to go when I started this Evo. I initially thought maybe invert the Pokemon and make it all creepy and spider-like, but it didn't feel on brand with the little fellas, so instead I thought, why not make it a grumpy old grandpa looking Pokemon? Lean even further into the whole innards out thing. He's just so done with being thrown about. This Evo has both ends able to in its out for twice the shaking of their grumpy old man fists at the enemy. I thought it'd be funny if the sort of star-shaped symbol couldn't be retracted as well anymore, and it sagged a bit to become this old man mustache. Lost a bit of the old hardness in their old age. I really wanted to make the older Evo here a bit more bumpy, just like we all get when older, so based it more off the texture of the sea cucumber itself. For typing, I chose to add fighting type. It's an old man pugilist with a massive sticky hand. Oh man, that just doesn't sound right. Ah. Uh. Eldadea. The bygone Pokemon, a war and fighting type. Evolves from Pukamuku at level 45. When a Pukamuku gets older, it evolves into Eldadea, becoming wiser and also stronger, but not much faster. It is quite protective of other Pukamuku. And so areas where Elder Dale live have prohibited the sport of Pukamuku chucking. It can control both ends of its body's innards to create sticky fists to fight and engulf prey. Due to its relatively larger size, it can go after bigger and bigger prey. It has a horrid flavor, so many Pokemon stay well away from Elder Dale and its territory. Elder Dale have the ability innards out. Is Miltank a little fella? Maybe not exactly, but I thought she'd fit right in here with getting an Evo. So welcome Miltank to the little fella's army. I had so many ideas for this one, but I wanted to make it a fairly simple next step Evo to give it that full cream, full fat Miltank Evo that you'd still feasibly see within a farm in the Pokemon universe and something you could catch early on as well. My prompt here was sort of an aged mum cow, a fine vintage of milk here, much larger and quadrupedal. This is the kind of Pokemon that would absolutely have one of those southern voices that would always be calling you sugar. Now, a weird part of the design was the tail. I really wanted to give it this milk bottle-like design, and the fact that milk could be shot out of it was just too funny and silly not to add. Man, I feel like I'm stepping through a minefield while talking about this Pokemon. I added the fairy type here as it was incredibly fitting for a caring milk mommy dairy cow. Dairy cow. I think if I ever do another milk tank evo, it'd have to be a psychic type and based on the cow jumping over the moon. <laughs> Moomaw, the cream Pokemon, a normal and fairy type, evolves from milk tank with a moonstone. Compared to their pre evolution, Moomaw are capable of producing five times the milk. This milk is so packed with nutrients that it needs to be watered down, otherwise it will hurt the stomach of anyone who drinks it. Moomaw can store milk in a separate part of their body that can then be shot out of their tails like a cannon. It can also use this to pour an extra hearty serving of milk. The milk from Moomaw's tail can provide great healing as well as hurting. A rolling Moomaw can be a devastating event for farmers. Moomaw have the abilities Thick Fat and Scrappy. Redene is the most little fella of the Pika clones. I mean, just listen to its cry. Hey, you two are just like twins! <laughs> well, they're both Evo for this little guy, I wanted to make it go to a sort of weird Raichu-like way, where it elongates a bit, but I really wanted to play up the fact that Dedene is all about antennas and the like, so I started out with this longer shape that would play into it being this long receptacle for radio waves with much longer whiskers in that classic antennae shape, but also turn the tail into one of those old top of the TV antennas. I think they were called rabbit ear antennas. Man, I hated them, they barely ever worked. Although it comes a bit later into the design, the eyes initially were a bit too creepy, even the normal dead NA eyes. 
but I'd actually go even creepier. <laughs> Playing into the old idea of your eyes going square if you get too close to the TV for too long. So the eyes would end up becoming this purple looking square design. I think this is the perfect kooky looking design for Didane to really spoil the cuteness of this little fella. I sound crazy saying that, but oh well. To all mice, the signal Pokemon, an electric and fairy type, evolves from Didane with a Thunderstone while near radio or TV stations. There's a saying parents say to their children to stop them from watching too much television that their eyes will become square like a Daor mice if they do. Despite their curious looks, Daor mice are incredibly friendly and will gladly eat from people's hands even on the plains and fields. They love nothing more than crunching down on sunflower seeds. Sometimes Daor mice will congregate and stand completely still. Some theorize they are receiving radio waves. Daor mice have the abilities oblivious and pick up. The final penultimate little fella is part of the true council of little fellas. It's Pink Urchin. Hooray! I feel like Snom, Love, Esther, Pikamuku, and Pink Urchin make the perfect little fella council. For its Evo, I wanted to go a bit towards the direction of sort of a quillfish to overquill evolution, with Pink Urchin becoming larger, spikier, and all around more armored. I like how Pink Urchin is almost only memorable because it has the little fella's energy. I mean, I thought for a bit that it was a water type in Paldea, but. No, pure electric type and Galarian, but still bless its little soul. I really wanted it to be this big menacing looking almost mecha design as well as a bit more toxic. Hence why I bumped up the purple a bit from the black that it normally has and giving us quite the unused type combo of poison and electric, since some urchins have a bit of toxic nature to them. There's this video of a person scooping up urchins, I guess, for eating, and now I can't get out of my head them doing this to a field of Akino Chin as they roll harmlessly into their net. Akino Chin, the spiny Pokemon, an electric and poison type, evolves from Pink Urchin after defeating a foe while poisoned after level 30. In a response to harsh conditions, Pink Urchin takes on this evolution, gaining a harmful, spiky, yet incredibly durable outer shell. It's quite difficult for most Pokemon to get past the numbing toxic spines, let alone break the shell. The mouth on the top of its head will filter feed particles from the water. If a Pokemon small enough to fall in gets trapped, chances are Akinochin will devour it instead of spitting it out. Akinochin live in large colonies, making it difficult for anything to pass by their territory easily. Akinochin have the abilities Lightning Rod and Electric Surge. So what did you think of my new council of not so lil fellas? Well many of them are short enough to still be lil. Is there a lil fella in Pokemon you want to evolve? Even if they do have a second stage, comment below what you think, as well as like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.